So today we're going to be learning how to generate out a PDF programmatically using Adonis.js and Puppeteer. And then we'll also, once generated, kick that invoice off in an email to a designated recipient. And we'll have some provided properties within that generated PDF as well. So this is the end application that we'll be building. So you can see it has authentication here so we can register some user. And then once we do, we'll be greeted with this send an invoice form where we can supply somebody's name. So something like John Doe and then some email for the actual invoice to be sent to. And we can hit send invoice and that will get sent off after it's generated. It will be sent off via email to MailTrap here where we can refresh. See it here invoice for John Doe, which is the name that we provided. And then just a boilerplate message there along with the actual PDF attached here. So you can see the name of the PDF is also using the supplied name. And if we open it up, you'll see that the supplied name is actually in the PDF as well as our authenticated users email. And those are there to give some kind of a demonstration on how to provide information into the PDF as a whole. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started by creating our application here. So let's do npm init Adonis TS app at latest. And let's call this Adonis PDF generator. And let's select web. And we can skip through all of these. Uh, you can select Webpack Encore if you'd like, but I'm just going to drop the Tailwind CSS CDN uh, on the page here so that we can get going. Okay, so once that's done, we should be good to go ahead and CD into it. And then let's go ahead and install the dependencies that we'll need. So first, we'll want to do npm i at adonis.js lucid. Then we'll want to do at adonis.js auth. Then adonis.js mail. Then phc argon two as the hashing mechanism for our auth. And then lastly, puppeteer. Okay, next we'll want to walk through configuring each of the Adonis packages within our application here. So let's do node ace configure at Adonis JS lucid, select whatever database driver you'll be using. I'll be using Postgres and I'll take my instructions in the terminal. Go ahead and copy everything between your database driver and the DB connection. Open up your project within your text editor and dive into the env.ts. And let's paste those in here and then get rid of everything in between your database driver and the DB connection. Okay, next let's do auth. So node ace configure Adonis JS auth. Select lucid and we'll be using web. We'll call our model user and let's have it go ahead and create a migration for us. Lastly, we have mail. So let's do node ace configure at Adonis JS mail. And I'll be using SMTP. I'm just going to send these off the mail trap. So uh, I'll select that. Take my instructions in the terminal and let's select SMTP and paste those in here as well. So once we have our EMVTS set up, we should be good to go ahead and define our actual environment variables. So first and foremost, my PG user here is Postgres. My password is password. My DB name here will be test. SMTP host will be smtp.mailtrap.io. The port's okay. And I just need to go grab the username and password from MailTrap. So, um, I'm going to be deleting this inbox, so I'm not really concerned about the username and password, but do be sure that you keep these a secret on your own application. And password, there we go. All right, so we should be good there. Um, we really don't need to do anything else with our user, so we should be good to go ahead and run that migration file. So let's go ahead and dive back into our terminal. Node ace migration run. Okay. Next, let's go ahead and set up authentication within our application. So let's go ahead and make a couple of controllers here. So let's do node ace make controller auth, node ace make controller invoice. We'll be using that later on. And then node ace make validator register and node ace make validator invoice. Okay, so that should get us going here. Let's dive into the auth controller. We're just going to put our authentication on the welcome page itself. So we're not going to have actual show pages for our register and login, which leaves us with just needing to define our register login and log out actual action routes. So let's do public async register. We will need request response and auth for this. Let's do const data equals await request validate and let's grab our register validator. Once we have that data, we should be good to create our user. So let's do const user equals await user dot create data. And then once we create the user, we should be good to go ahead and log them in. So await auth dot 
login provided the user and then we can return response redirect to route home and we will name our welcome page home here momentarily let's go ahead and do public async login request response grab the session as well and auth HTTP context contract there and for this one let's just grab the email and password off of the body so this would be request only email and password then let's try await auth attempt provided the email and the password if that should fail then we will catch the error and set the session flash for the form as a whole so errors login email or password was incorrect set it with a generic error message there and then return response redirect to route home lastly log in here public async login response auth http context contract there await auth lockout and return response redirect and you guessed it to route home oops called that logged in it needs to be logged out okay lastly let's define our register schema so first let's import rules and our schema here will have an email schema.string we can go ahead and trim it and then the rules will be email and I'm going to break this down into a separate line. Let's also do rules.unique. The table for this will be users. The column will be email. And let's also set it to be case insensitive. And then we'll also want password as a schema string. And let's set the rules for that to be a min length of eight. Next, let's create those routes. So let's dive into our routes. And let's do route.post auth login auth controller dot login as auth dot login route post auth register for auth controller dot register as auth register and lastly let's do route dot get for auth logout point it to auth controller dot logout as auth logout while we're here, let's also dive into our start directory within our kernel and let's register our middleware. So let's do as a global middleware, import app middleware, silent auth. And let's also register auth as a named middleware. So import app middleware and auth. All right, let's go ahead and set up our authentication here. So let's dive into our welcome.edge page where we're going to put all of this. And let's get rid of all of the boilerplate styling that's going on within the welcome page here. And let's plop the Tailwind CSS CDN on the page so that we have access to everything without actually needing to set that up to keep us going here. And within our body, let's get rid of everything within main, including main. And then on the body, let's set this to be class BG gray 100 padding top of 12. And then let's do a div with a class of container flex and flex wrap. We'll have an aside with a class of width full, MD width one fourth, and a PX of six. And then we'll have a main with a class width full, MD width three fourths, BG white rounded, XL, and a padding of six. Within our aside here is where we'll actually put our authentication. So we'll do at if not auth user else and if. So within the if here, we'll want a couple of sectioned uh, items. So I'm just gonna copy and paste a little bit of markup here a couple of times. So that will be one for login and one for register. Within each of these, we will want a form. So the method to post the action to a route auth login for this one. And for this one, we also want to grab that form error that we set. So let's do set login errors to flash messages dot get errors dot login. And we can copy this form, paste it down here for our register, renaming that to register and getting rid of the set. All right. Next, let's go ahead and create a component for our input. So let's do components input edge label class block margin bottom three if we have a label provided then we will do a span 
class text extra small upper case tracking wider font medium text gray 600 and provide the label within there otherwise we will want to do input type type default that to text name provided the name and then the class here will be bg white text small border border gray 300 rounded px2 py1 and width Cool. Lastly, we want to do our errors. So we'll do at if array is array errors and errors has a length. Then we'll do small class text extra small text red 500 and margin top of one. And then we'll provide it the errors with a sentence case of the errors joined together since it will be an array. All right. And then lastly, let's go ahead and create a component for our button as well. So let's do button edge within here, set a couple of defaults. So we'll have set block, this will be a Boolean, we'll default it to false. Then we'll have the block class, we'll check whether or not we want block. If we do, then we'll set this to block with full text center, otherwise an empty class. Then we'll have our class name here, which we will check to see whether or not a manual one's being provided, otherwise, we will provide our block class and bg gray 900 text gray 200 hover bg gray 800 hover text white duration 150 text extra small uppercase tracking wider px3 py2 and rounded if there is not an href prop provided else and then end if so if there is not an href prop provided we will want this to be a button type of the type provided. Otherwise, we will set this to button class equals class name. And then we'll just provide it the main slot within here. So await slots.main. Otherwise, let's copy the button and change it to an anchor, getting rid of type and replacing it with an href, just like so. All right, so that should be it for those. We can jump back into our welcome page and rig those up. So we'll want at exclamation point input label as email type as email name as email and then for this one we also want to provide the errors manually as login errors we can copy this change everything from email to password just like so and then lastly we want our button type to be submit and let's set this to be block so block true and let's set the text for that to log in we can copy our inputs and our button here, paste that down into our registration form, get rid of the errors on the inputs, and then change the button from login to register. So at this point, we should be good to go ahead and save and we should be able to actually register our lastly here, let's copy one of our sections. And then down here in our else, let's go ahead and plop this in here, change the h4 to say, hi, and then we'll do auth user email. We'll set this to also have a margin bottom of three and we can get rid of the form keeping the button and instead of a type here we will want an href to our route auth logout change the text to logout so we should be good to go ahead and save this boot our server up and test out our authentication so let's do npm run dev let's jump into our browser give it a refresh all right so here's the main section where we'll put our little form for our PDF generation. Let's go ahead and register somebody. So, and hit enter. Oh, forgot to give the route name home for our welcome page. Let's jump back into our routes, do as home there. So it looks like it succeeded. It just failed with the actual redirect going on there. Um, so if we were to jump back into our home page, yep, you can see that we are indeed logged in. Our user has been created. It just failed to actually redirect since it could not find the route. So next, let's go ahead and just take care of the right hand side here real quick. I'm just going to copy and paste in some generic markup um, as well as an if else statement. So if our users logged in, then we will want to show them that form. Otherwise, we'll say log in to generate an invoice. And then right here is where our form will want to be. So let's go ahead and just add that in post action equals. We'll create the route here momentarily. So we'll just leave this empty. And then the class will be max width of small. We'll have two inputs here. So let's do at input label recipient name and the name for that will be recipient name let's put it inside of an object so name will be a property inside of the recipient object let's copy this paste it once change name to email 
and then let's add a button type submit and set the text to send invoice. So let's start by just getting a PDF generated. So for this, we'll want an additional page. So within our views, let's create a new file called invoice.edge. And we can copy the basic HTML markup from our welcome page and just get rid of all of the content within it. So we can get rid of our entire div right there. And let's also replace the margin top of 12 with just a margin of six. And then we'll want an actual print container. Um, so let's go ahead and add that as a component. So let's do components and then we'll do containers print dot edge. And what we'll do is we'll allow this to be a dynamic element type. So we'll set this to as, and then we'll provide that as, as a prop with a default value of div. And we'll set the class to BG white width as a defined 11 inches height as a defined 8.5 inches MX of auto and a P of 1.25 inches. And then we'll also add in an additional class name option there. And then we'll want to end our as there as well and provide it our main slot content. So await slots main. And then for the as let's set as and then as and default it to the div. So then we can jump back into our invoice page and do at containers dot print and then end and that should plop it just right there. And if we wanted to, we could set the as to be like something like a main element. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and plop the generic markup that we have for the invoice within here. Um, the only thing going on is within this top section, we have an if recipient, and then we're doing generated for the recipient's name, and then an H5 with our authenticated user's email being printed out as the sent by. So let's start by getting this actually generated out as a PDF. So let's go ahead and create, let's do node ace make PRLD file, and let's call this events. It's gonna ask us what we want this to load for. We can select just the HTTP requests for this use case. And then let's jump into the events file here and let's import event from at IOC Adonis core event. We'll have an interface called send invoice here, which will be our user of our user model recipient, which will be a name string and an email string. And then lastly, a signed invoice path of type string and we'll do event on send invoice set this to async user recipient and signed invoice path and set the type to our send invoice interface and then we'll also want to import puppeteer so import puppeteer from puppeteer and then we'll want to create a browser instance within puppeteer which is a headless browser so let's do const browser equals await puppeteer dot launch and then we can do const page equals await browser dot new page to create a page within our browser or you could think of this as a tab and then we'll want to do await page go to and point it to it needs the protocol in addition to our domain and the port since we're using this locally and then we'll want to provide it our signed invoice path and then we can tell it to wait until and then we have a couple of options. We can do DOM content loaded, load, or we could do network idle for zero. And then we can say page emulate media type and set this to screen so that it loads it as screen instead of a print or something like that. And then lastly, to actually generate out the PDF, all that we need to do here is do const PDF equals await page PDF and provide it a format for the page. So we can do A4 for an A4 style paper page and this will return back the PDF as a buffer um, if you need it to be more of a stream there is a create PDF stream so you can do that as well if you need to send it off to s3 or something like that but for our use case the buffer will work just fine so let's actually before we just kick this off in an email let's test it to see what we're getting so let's go ahead and import drive from at IOC Adonis core drive and this will give us good use case on how we could go about saving this somewhere else if we needed to. Drive.put, I'm just gonna name this test.pdf, and we just provided the PDF since it is a buffer already. So we can go ahead and save this. We'll use our user and recipient whenever we actually send off the email. And then we need to actually create two routes for this. One, to accept our forms submission with our recipient information and to actually kick off the 
uh, PDF generation. And then we need one to actually generate out the PDF page, which our Puppeteer instance will point to. So let's jump back into our routes here and let's define the routes for this. We will do this with an invoices controller. So let's do route get slash PDF slash invoice and then add a UID parameter to that invoices controller dot generate as PDF dot invoice. So we'll prefix that with PDF so that we know that this is the page that actually renders the PDF that should be used to generate out the PDF itself. And then we'll do route post invoice send invoices controller dot send as invoice dot send. And then we'll add the middleware auth to this to ensure that the user is authenticated here. Next, let's go ahead and dive into our invoices controller and get our HTTP context contract un uncommented. So we know that we're going to want two different methods. We're going to want public async send, let's grab request response and auth for this. This is the route that will actually handle our form submission and kick off our puppeteer page creation. And then we'll want public async generate with request response view and params. And this is the page that will actually render out our PDF. So let's do our send first. So we could do const and then we'll get our form data back here as await request validate. And let's provide it our invoice validator. And then let's go ahead and define the schema for this. So let's dive into it. Let's actually grab our rules and then head down to our schema. We'll have two properties, a name, which will be a schema.string. We can trim it. And that's really all that we need to do there. And then an email which should be a schema.string. We can trim that as well. And let's verify that it is indeed an email. And that should be all that we need to do there. So once we get that data back, what we want to do is then provide the data as a query string into the end URL that we will want our puppeteer instance to visit so that we have that information available to send to our event as our user and our recipient. Since this is a headless browser, it is going to be a separate session from the browser that we are currently on whenever we view our own page. So it's creating a new whole browser instance. It's going to have different cookies, different session data. So we could add the cookies in so that they share a session, um, but the easiest approach is just to provide whatever data you need within any query string parameters or path params as we're doing here. And then since we don't want this to just be a public URL, since if we take a look at our routes, we can't put authentication on it since it doesn't share the same browser session that we're currently on, but we also don't want this to be public. So what we'll do is make this a signed URL to be able to visit this page. So on the invoices controller here for our generate, what we'll want to do is if not request has valid signature, then we'll return response as a bad request or however you wish to return that back. And then on our send, we'll go ahead and create const path equals, and then we'll want to import the route module. So import route from at IOC Adonis core route, and then do route make signed URL for our PDF invoice route, provided the UID path parameter as our auth user ID. And then we'll set this to expire in a matter of three minutes. So it's going to have a very short life. And then we'll set our query string to our data. So now in order to view the PDF as a whole, it needs to be a valid signed URL, which should take care of the fact that the URL in itself will be public. Next, let's go ahead and import our event from IOC Adonis add-ons event. And we'll want to do event emit send invoice and provide this our user, which will be from our auth user, provided our recipient here as our data dot, whoops, apologies about that, our invoice validator. This should actually be inside of a schema. So we should have recipient as schema object, and then the members should be our name and our email. There we go, that looks more correct. So now we should have data dot recipient, and the reason I'm doing that is so that you can provide additional information that you may want to provide in as the query string here to show that you could add more than just your recipient information. And then lastly, our signed invoice path as our 
assigned URL path. Lastly, once we do that and kick off our event, we'll want to return response redirect to route home. And then for our generate method, we'll want to do const recipient equals and then grab it off of our query string. So request query string dot recipient. And then we'll do const user equals await user find or fail by the params.uid. Since we're not providing the actual user, we're just providing in the UID. Lastly, we'll return view render our invoice page, providing it the user and the recipient. All right, let's jump back into our welcome page and actually rig up our forms action here. So this should be route invoice.send, and we should be good to go ahead and test this out. So at this point, it should just drop the actual PDF within a temporary upload directory on our project since we're using drive to save it. So we'll use this as a test. So we'll do John Doe test at test.com. Hit enter on that. Whoops, looks like the event is not within add-ons. It must be within core. So let's jump back into events here. Oh, I guess it was in the invoices that I did that. Yep. All right, so core, there we go. All right, let's try this again. So let's resend, okay. So that should have reset with the same form data. So we should be able to go back into our, our project here, see the temp directory uploads, and there is our test PDF. Let's actually use Finder here to go find it within our project and open it up to make sure it looks proper. And voila, there it is. So you can see our recipient's name and our authenticated user's email. So everything looks right there. So we should be good to go ahead and attach this in an email and send it off. So we'll dive back into events. So let's go ahead and import mail from at IOC Adonis. And I believe this one's the one that's from add-ons. Yep. Mail. So let's do await mail dot send and then message and message dot from our user email. Provide it some type of a name here. So add a cast will work just fine. And then to the recipient email and let's attach data since we have this as a buffer and let's provide it the PDF here. And let's also provide it a file name as, and let's import a helper. So import string from at IOC Adonis core helpers. And let's do string snake case, our recipient name. And let's add another underscore with invoice.pdf. And then let's set the subject to invoice for our recipient name and then let's just add some boilerplate text here hello please find your invoice attached so we can give that a save now if you wanted to save your file off on your local system send the email um, either with send or send later to put it into a queue you could save that file name you could make the file name generic by using string .generate random. so you could do something like this so that would be your file name and then you would provide the file name here and then you would use mail to send it off and then you could await drive dot delete your file name. So it would create the file, save it on your local file system, send off your email and then delete it off your local file system if you wanted to do it that way. Um, the way that we're doing it, we're just using the data object from the actual created PDF itself. So we have no need to actually save this onto our file system the way that we have this. If you're sending a lot of invoices, you might want to go with the approach that we just went over, or you might even better yet, want to put it off into an official job queue. So you have some options with how you can approach this. Um, if you're just sending one here and there, this approach will work just fine. So we can go ahead and save this and let's go give it a test. So let's jump back into our browser, refresh it for sanity's sake, name John Doe, test at test.com, send this off. All right, looks like it sent off okay. Let's check out MailTrap, give it a refresh. There is our invoice for John Doe. We can see that we have our please find your invoice attached message. It's from our logged in user. It's to our recipient provided email. And we do have an attachment right up here called John Doe invoice. If we click on it, it'll open up and it looks just like the one that we had previously saved. So that is how you can go about generating an invoice with Adonis and Puppeteer and then sending it off via an attachment inside of an email. And we additionally covered how you can specify some additional parameters for that email, like who to send to and some information for the invoice itself. And then while we're here, we can go ahead and jump back into our application and just verify 
that are slash PDF invoice and our UID route is not accessible without that signed URL, which it is not, as you can see here.